Hey, Shalom. First off, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakaq Kadash, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. I want to give a double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone who has taught me this truth. I want to give peace and blessings to the Akim across the four corners of the earth who teach this truth from verse to life to do so. It's going to be a quick video. Low will in the videos, edifying, low will in the Akim gifts from this video. Hey, what this video is going to be about or titled is going to be titled Look at the Generations of Old. Okay, now I'm going to read Sirach 2 and 10. And the reason why I'm going to get into this video is because in the time of our trials, right, these are some of the things that we have to think about, right? And when the scriptures tell you, look at the look at the generations of old, right? If you look at the generations of old and you do that by reading the, uh, reading the scriptures, you look at prophets, right? Look at how the Lord always came through for his men. The Lord has always came through for his men, no matter what, man. Okay, and I'm going to get a story after I read, uh, after I read uh, Sirach. Okay, this is uh, Sirach 2, and I'm going to start at 7. Okay, I'm going to start at 7. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. So if you fear the Lord... Wait for his mercy. If you read Micah, the seventh chapter, it tells you that I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. You know, as a matter of fact, let me get it really quick, really quick. Let me get that. Let me get that. Right here. It says, um, Micah 7 and 9, it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh, because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Okay? Now it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, uh, Yahweh, because I have sinned against him. Okay? Now, same mentality that we have to have, right? We have to bear the indignation, which, you know, we're bearing that, but with us bearing that, we can't fall. Okay? We can't, what I mean by that is we can't, we can't forget about the most high man we can't forget we can't say oh this is too hard you know this is too this is too rough this is too hard I ain't, i'm not doing this right now a just man follows seven times but he get back up again man you know the most High don't want no quitter man he don't want no quitter okay so you gotta have a mentality it says i will bear the indignation of the lord yahweh because i have sinned against him we all have sinned against the lord man you know we all have sinned against the, uh, the Lord. So guess what? You know, we have to bear what we have to go through. What we go through is light. He's not going to put too much on us that we can't bear. And that's the mercy of, of the Lord, man. Okay, that's the mercy of the Lord. Now, let me get back into this. Sirach 2, really quick. I'll start back at uh, 7. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest he fall. This is clear instruction, man. It says, ye that fear the Lord. Not everybody fears the Lord. So the Lord is talking about to the, giving uh, advice to those who fear him, man. You know? Scriptures tell you, basically, roughly paraphrases, it's in a, uh, it's in Ezra's. It says, don't, don't worry about, you know, how the wicked um, is going to be punished, but worry about how the righteous shall be saved, man. Okay? Because the most high, not everybody is going to make it. Not everyone is going to make it. It says, ye that fear the Lord... Wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward should not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Now this is 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Now how do you abide in the fear of the Most High? Will you abide in, abide in the fear of the Most High by being a man of the Lord, by following the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your abilities, by being brotherly, right? By seeking the Lord like gold, seeking it like riches, man. Seeking wisdom like gold, like riches. Seeking his word, giving your all to it, putting it first, okay? It says, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The Lord has care for his elect, man. You know, the Lord has care for his elect. Now, let me get, let me get that really quick. Let me get that really quick. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 9. It says, it says, uh, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, 
and he hath care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. Okay? So guess what? Scripture says he has care for his elect. The ungodly is going to... <coughs> So like they're going to be punished. Okay? But notice the 9 it says, They that put their trust in, in him shall not understand. I so like it. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy. Okay? Grace and mercy. Right? Which we need. Right? Which we're under grace and we need mercy is to his saints. And he hath care for his elect. Right? Huh? Okay, one more thing, one more thing in uh, in uh, Sirach, really quick. I want to point out it says, Check this out, check this out. It says, Sirach 2, verse uh, uh, I'm gonna read 11 and 12. It says, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in a time of affliction. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and a sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. So if you lack faith, you won't be defended, man. You know? But that's why we do these videos, right? Because in the time to come, like the brother from uh, L.A., right, did a, I, I didn't finish the video, but Lord willing, I do finish it. He was getting into wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter. It was beautiful, man. It was beautiful because he was going into how uh, how uh, he was going into uh, he was going into basically how the Lord, you know, delivered uh, prophets, you know, out of, uh, you know, out of out of, you know, the harsh punishments that they seem to be going through, you know, but the most I had delivered them. And, you know, one uh, example he gave was the Maccabees, you know. And another example he gave uh, was, I believe, was Seth, if I'm not mistaken, you know, um, where he was uh, stoned, okay, where he was stoned, okay, but uh, he, um, he, um, I don't, there was, you know, kind of, it doesn't say in the scriptures, but uh, it was kind of saying that he didn't uh, really feel it, you know, he didn't, um, he didn't uh, feel it, you know, like the Lord could turn your nervous system off to where you don't feel you know, any pain, you know, and it, like I said, it's not, that. that's just, you know, that's just us, you know, kind of, it's not scriptural, but that's just us kind of, you know, thinking or, or thinking about it or talk, talking amongst each other and thinking about, you know, how the Lord deliver, you know, he could turn off your nervous system to where you don't feel no pain, man, you know, and we think that, that ha I think that that might have happened in that situation, okay, but let me grab this really quick. Really fast. Second Ezra's. Oh, I'm sorry, not Second Ezra's. Second Kings, the sixth chapter. Okay. Now, this is a story I'm gonna get now. This is it's a good it's a good story to read. It's uh it goes into um the famine that Israel had to suffer. Um you can read uh seven and eight, you know, it kind of goes on, but I'm gonna kinda expedite it, you know, for, for time purposes. Um, I'm just going to get straight to the point. So I'm going to get what I got highlighted, and then I'm going to kind of explain how the Lord, you know, made a miracle, you know, made a made a miracle visible, you know, to where the servant of Elisha um, was able to see and was able to not fear what was happening, okay? This is 2nd Edges, uh, it's like in 2nd Kings 6 and 12, it says, And one of his servants said, None, none my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Chamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it, it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And this is talking about the king of, uh, the king of uh, Assyria. From the, the, yeah, the king of the Syrians. Okay? It says, uh, it says, uh, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they fell, it's like, and they came by night and could pass the city, city about. So what happened was the king has sent, you know, his, his mighty men, if you will say, or his soldiers, 
you know, to look for um, Alicia. Okay, but Alicia wasn't tripping. Alicia didn't. He, it was no sweat with Alicia, man. He wasn't tripping. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna further explain why. It says, and uh, and when the servant of the man of the Most High was ri risen early, and going forth, behold, and host can pass the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how how shall we do? So he was like, Hey, what we gonna do? You know, they outside, they got the city surrounded. What are we gonna do? You know, so he didn't know. You know, he didn't have he didn't have any any faith really. You know, he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what to do. In his mind, he probably thought it was over with. Okay, and he asked. This is sixteen. He says, and he answered, "Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them." This is what Elisha said. Okay, now check this out. In seventeen, it says, and Elisha prayed and said, "Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see." And the Lord Yahweh opened his eyes, of, opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Okay? So when the, when the Most High opened the servant's eyes, he saw all the protection, right? He saw the protection that was around Elisha. He saw the spiritual realm, man. You know? He saw, he saw things that, that, that made him not fear. He saw the protection that the, that the Lord had for Elisha. The Lord didn't forsake Elisha, man, and his servant was able to see that. Okay? Now I'm going to read in uh, 18, it says, And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord Yahweh, and says, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Now if you read further down, right, if you read further down, Elisha led them into Samaria, um, you know, and gave them, like, food and stuff like that, so they stopped, uh, so they, uh, you know, roughly paraphrasing the story, but so they, so they could stop trying to raid, um, you know, the land of Israel. Okay. But if you look in this, the Lord, you know, was able to, to show the servant that, Hey man, don't trip. Don't trip. You were the man of the Lord. You know, you were the man, you with a man of the Lord, you know, you serving the man of the Lord. Look at the protection I got for y'all. You know, the protection is all around, man. Okay. The protection is all around, man. So guess what? What it says in Wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter, he has care for his elect, man. What it says in Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see the, uh, the, the, the Lord ever despite. I'm going to get it one more time, man. I'm going to get it one more time and I'm going to end it with that. I'm going to get it one more time. These are the things that we have to think about. And don't get me wrong, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well. Yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, it's going to be hard, you know, but well, sometimes it can get hard. I don't know if it's going to be hard in that time. I mean, you might have the zeal on you like you ready to go. You know, you ready for whatever happened. OK, Lord willing, we had that or the brothers that have that, that got to face face that Lord willing, man. You know, Lord willing, you had that zeal on you to where like you ready. Like what's happening? Like what's happening? Let's go. OK, this is uh, Sirach 2 and 10 again. It says, look at the generations of old. And see that ever that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or that any abide in his fear was forsaken, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And that's the question, right? And I got an example for you, man. He he came through for a listener and servant. That's just one example out of many. I can give many examples, man. But that's that's one story. And I encourage your brothers to read that story. It's a good story, man. Um, you know, it's kind of sad about you know the it's the you know the famine. It goes into the famine that Israel had to. At the bear, man. But uh, you know, it's a great story, man. You know, notice that you know Elisha was was protected, and he's a man of the Lord, man. You know, so it's actually a blessing. It's actually a a, a benefit to being a, a man of the Lord, man. Remember, Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love, man. And this is a, if you abide in His spirit, you know, and if you serving the Lord in truth and sincerity and by in abiding in His fear, He not gonna forsake you, man. If you part of the elect. Or the one third, okay. Low willing, I'm part of the elect of the one third, okay. A low willing, you Akim are as well, okay. So, with that, low willing veto is edifying. Low willing, you Akim got some from this video. When they give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashimi, Yahweh Shah, Bashimaka Kodash, we tell brothers keep pushing on to the next. Shalom.